Uh, favorite memories from the mixtapes era and your come up? My favorite memories from the mixtape era when I was coming up. Um, I like the physical aspect. I like the aspect of physical mixtapes, going to mixtape spots in New York, uh, Philly, DC, Virginia, everywhere. Uh, Jersey, Connecticut. I like the idea of getting 5,000 CDs pressed up, going to pick them up from the spot, the covers, getting the 5,000 covers printed up, getting the cases, spending all night until five, six in the morning, putting a CD and a cover in a case and folding it, boom, 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 like an assembly line. Um, it seemed tedious at the time, but I loved the dedication of having to put that work in and then having to go beat the street and go talk to a mixtape spot, white t-shirt spot, spot that sells white t-shirts and, you know, and DVDs, come up DVDs and all that stuff and convincing them to take 30 of your mixtape, 20 of your mixtape, 50 of your mixtape, going out there in the street with the people and handing them out and selling them. The hand-in-hand -hand physical aspect, I love it. And if you could spend one hour with any person dead or alive, who would it be and why? If I could spend an hour with any one person dead or alive, Hmm. I may have to give you a couple. Uh, Malcolm X, Miles Davis, and my grandfather, who I never met, who passed when, uh, before I was born. Okay, and the best song you did that never came out? The best song I did that never came out is one of the songs on my upcoming album, in Celebration of Us. Because all my music comes out. Um, you know, I always believe there's two types of artists when it comes to making music and putting it out or otherwise. You have the Biggie artists and you have the Tupac artists. You know, you have the Biggie artists where he would record music and put it right out. If he didn't have a project he was working on or a purpose with some music, he wouldn't just go to the studio just to record. That's why there's not that much posthumous Biggie music out. There's remixes and verses that existed that came out and they take them and flip them and bounce them because there's nothing left. Then you have Pac who lived in the studio and was recording 10, 20 songs a day, five days in a row, and then taking two days off to be inspired again. So there's all this music that still exists that no one heard, brand new music that you can get because he was just a lab rat. He was in the lab all day, he lived the studio rat, you know, and there's no right or wrong way. Both methods are cool. I'm more of a biggie artist, you know, I don't go to the studio every day and record 10, 15 songs a day just to record and then pick the 15 that I like for an album. You know, if there's 15 songs on music for my friends, I wrote 15 songs and that was it. If there's 15 songs on Easy Truth, I wrote 15 songs and that's it. I write with that purpose. There's a beginning, an ending, and everything in the middle. And whatever's there is there. So there's not that much music that doesn't exist. So I would say it's some music that didn't come out yet, but it's about to come out. Okay, and if you could play any role in any movie or TV show, who would you pick? If I could play any role in any movie or TV show, wow. Um, wow. Let me see. I think Marlo and the Wyatt would be great. Um, I think that would be dope. The Calm. The Calm, but still getting the point of growth, the aggression. But he, he only screamed once in the whole series. That was when they was locked up and he said, my name is my name. Let him know Marlo step to any motherfucker, Omar, Barksdale, whoever. My name is my name. He only, rose, he was only raising his voice once in the whole series. But you got that aura of what it was and what his word meant. So I would, I would say Marlo, um, let's see. Uh, one of the voices for one of the Fat Albert characters. I grew up with Fat Albert's head. I still love Fat Albert. I've been existed now and about five years old today. Uh, so one of the voices on, on Fat Albert, you know, maybe Rudy, of course, was my favorite character growing up on the Fat Albert cartoon. That weird Harold is something else. I wish I knew what. You won't get me hiding my magazine from nobody. Um, and then, um, yeah, uh, Leon Black on uh, Kirby Enthusiasm. That was 
Come on. What's up? Turn this down. Chill out. What's too loud? Here on the street. Wait, wait a fucking minute. Wait, I'll turn this shit down. Okay. Yeah. What are you doing? Ah. Uh, you okay? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm fucking lamping. What you doing? You lamping? Chilling. Relaxing. Okay. And uh, what's the status of your book when the paintings talk? Oh man, you do your research. The status of when paintings talk. Um. I haven't started it yet because I do have so much going on. New albums, TV show stuff that I'm writing. I have a film that's in theaters, Patty Cakes, that I'm a part of behind the scenes and I have a role in, I'm in the film as well. I'm an associate producer on the film. I did the consulting on the film and taught the lead actress how to rap. So uh, I have all that stuff going on, ghost writing stuff. But um, the book is coming. The name might change, but the book is coming because it's something I want to do. It's a bucket list thing that I, I do want to accomplish. Okay, and the most important book you've ever read? The most important book I've ever read, um, I can name a couple. The Autobiography of Malcolm X, uh, Man, Child in the Promised Land by Claude Brown. Uh, I can name a couple. Definitely some Mike Smith stuff. Um, some Richard Wright stuff, for sure. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you once again, man. Thanks.